You use a lot of vibrant colors in your work. What inspires your color choice? You know, my work is all about color. Um, and I really like the way colors interact with each other. There's a unique pleasure for me in terms of when one color sits next to another color and how they sort of have a conversation. So the, what informs my color choices are um, the way I begin a painting, which is, is, is a responsive kind of um, process where I lay down one color almost arbitrarily and then I respond to that color that's on the, on the panel or the canvas. You use C print transparency in many of your works. How do you accommodate for the different degrees of light that will come through the window? So the different degrees of light um, actually change with the seasons and also with where in the world the transparencies are. So most recently, I have an exhibition in Evra, Portugal, and the light in Portugal is quite strong and quite clear. And so the level of printing uh, and imaging and saturation in the transparency has to be deeper and stronger than in the transparencies I've had in Atlanta. You work on some very large projects. How do you manage to create art on such a large scale? Technology. <laughs> I actually love the idea of, for instance, uh, my first work uh, of that kind of scale was retracings at the High Museum. And it was actually three floors of the atrium of the Richard Meyer building. Um, and that scale was because I wanted the viewer to feel like they were inside my painting so that they could feel like they were looking at the brushstrokes um, uh, under a microscope, except it was the opposite. They were greatly enlarged and that enlargement allowed them to see my process and experience my process of how I put paint down and the striations of color within each stroke. Are there colors that work better on the C print transparency? Are there colors that don't? Um, no, because we can manipulate those, all those colors. And, you know, if there's a color that I particularly like, you know, it comes from actually the ideas of stained glass, which um, there's a cobalt blue that is particularly beautiful in stained glass and glass, but I can also achieve this in the transparencies. Is there an in intensity of light that you prefer while you are looking at your work? Are certain works intended to be, to only be viewed during a certain time of the day? Well, it's very interesting that you asked that question, Haley, because, um, but people have to understand about the work is that it functions, um, just like stained glass. So during the day, the work can only be seen from the inside. And at night, the work is seen from the outside, um, which is quite wonderful, actually, the exterior, because it becomes a public work. And anyone who is passing the building can see the work. They don't have to enter. So that there's this double, dual relationship between the light streaming through during the day and being illuminated by the sun and then being outside the building at night and being and and being able to see the work from the exterior do you have a specific color theme in mind before you start a painting or do you decide which colors to use during the process i absolutely it's a process oriented choice so when I start a painting, as I said before, I sometimes start with a, a color just because I like the color. Um, and it's actually just to be in responsive to. And very often those colors are never seen again. They're buried within the layers of either the painting, the drawing, the collage, or the transparency. 
So I'm always working in layers of one thing on top of another. And it's, oh, the color is always in reference to that layering and process of the interaction of each color. Do you try to convey a certain mood or emotion with the colors in your paintings? Yes, I do. I think that the emotion that I'm always looking for is one of actually, you know, when, when the painting has a kind of joy for me, um, when it kind of resonates with color and has a kind of exuberance of each piece of color, that's when I know the work is successful. Are there certain colors you try to avoid? <laughs> I always say certain colors are difficult. Um, one color that we always say is that green is an unforgiving color. Um, and it is, it's a color that can go wrong so easily, but I don't in, uh, avoid it actually. Most recently I've been um, looking at it both in nature and looking at the, the colors of green within nature Nature, nature does it better, but, I, but I've also embraced it in the work. And it's very interesting for me of how to manipulate the green, what colors it can sit next to, and what kind of feeling it gives the paintings. Do you limit the amount of colors you use in a painting? Never. Have any of your works been inspired by a single color? Well, I actually think, once again, I'm very interested in the idea of blue. And I'm also very interested in the way color uh, interacts with black and white. So there's been a conscious effort, I think, to um, have sometimes a, a, a passage of white or black within the work. I also did a whole series of works in 2012, and I had an exhibition in New York called Emergency Orange. And, um, and I really studied the color orange and really focused on it because again, it's one of those difficult colors. But also the idea that there were other colors that are became part of my palette, which um, were not available to me um, as a young artist. And I'm talking about fluorescent colors. So the idea of hot pink, uh, lime green, uh, a particular lime green, a, an electric blue, and also a fluorescent orange. And in 2012, I started adding these colors into my palette. And I will say though, in the last year, they've sort of receded into the background. 